good evening. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this session of selected talks. I think the I think we have four talks selected from the submissions, and the theme of this session is COVID-19 and the Atlas. Uh, I'm Xu Gongzhang of Tsinghua University. Uh, so let's introduce the first speaker, Professor Jian Yang of uh, the University of Sydney uh, School of Mathematics and Statistics. I think uh, Jian got her bachelor's degree from University of Sydney and PhD degree from the University of Berkeley. And now she is a professor in uh, the university and uh, her research stands as the in, 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 uh, interface between medicine and methodology development and has centered on the development of methods and application of statistics in problems of the omics and biomedical research. So without further delay, let's welcome Jen. Jen, can you share your uh, screen? Hi, I'm sharing my screen. Can you see it? Not yet. Oh, so let me it's try a again. Black, it's a black screen. Okay. Is yeah. that working? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So thank you very much for the organizer, for organizing such a fantastic meeting. Um, it's great to see so many of us all over Asia, myself from Australia, um, being able to be in the same place discussing a lot of challenges associated with single cell study. So I'm part of the Sydney Precision Bioinformatics Group, and a group of us have very strong interests in developing statistical and computational methodology to tackle the foremost significant challenge posted in modern biology and medicine. And as you expect, in the last two years, a lot of this challenge is due with single cell data. So as a group, our effort has been on integrative analysis on single cell data, developing methods for data integration, cell type identification, cell type compositional analysis, and so on. And just like many of you who are in this audience, in the last few months, um, we've been working, um, as in particular my student Ying Xing Lin and I have been working with a group of molecular biologists to leverage a lot of advanced single cell analytical tools that we have developed and what is available in the public domain as single cell data to develop a novel workflow for identifying specific cell type interaction in COVID patient. And this is the focus of my talk today. Now, given this is a COVID section and the amount of media surrounding this pandemic, I won't go into too much background description, just to say that we all know that COVID patients suffers from a wide range of disease progression, from people who have no symptom to moderate symptom, representing a very healthy immune response, to people who have suffered from severe and even critical symptoms um, due to a dysfunctional immune response. So in our workflow, we're trying to look at what, what happened. Here we have three stages. First is data collection, and we utilize some of our developed tools to re-annotate the data, merge them together, and then look at the cell type interaction and further interpretation. So in the first step, we collect what's out there. So in about a month ago, what's out there is the following. There's quite a lot of PBMC data available, but our focus is actually on lung tissue specific information. So we will be focusing on reanalysis of this trial et al paper, which is 19 patient from Germany. The first step we've done is to reannotate the data. This is a data set where they select tissues from the nasopharynx. And here is a quick chart to show that they have collect patient from healthy, but also people at various time from the days where symptoms started. A bulk of them happened around day 10 and some of them much later on. So in our cell type annotation work, we use this method that we have created as C-classified, 
that is based on ensemble learning. The other component is we also have joint classification. So we can use multiple reference data set to annotate this information. This is particularly important if you want to have as refined as an annotation as possible. The paper is published in Molecular System Biology. It both have a shiny app. And if anyone is interested in this work, feel free to email me at any time. So we took four public atlas type um, healthy lung tissue and use it as a reference data and re-annotate. And we also do an iterative procedure because we can also re-annotate information associated with disease um, cell states. And here's a TSNI plot that most people are familiar to see in single cell, where we have a collection of immune cells, a collection of epithelial cell, and so on. So if we simply look at the cell type composition of all individuals, you can see, wow, it's a plot that says, apart from that neutrophil being very dominated um, in moderate and critical, but even then, you can see a huge variability. It is not clear what can actually distinguish between the moderate and the critical individuals. There is quite a lot of changes. So this actually tells us that a lot of time when we just profile the data, what we are seeing is just inflammation response. Is there a way to get deeper and look at how the epithelial cells interact with the, with the um inflammation on immune cells. So we look at cell-cell interaction analysis. Here we're measuring a directional changes, a, a directional association. So for a particular cell type A, we look at the expression of the ligand and compare that to the response in a different cell type B. And the measure we use is a recent paper um, that is in bioarchive known as the cell chat. In this cell chat, it's a very complicated equation, but they take into the expression of the ligand and receptor, as well as their own database of an antagonist and agonist, as well as cell type proportion, to profile this communication probability between ligand and receptor between two cell pairs. So putting that information together, we could have a matrix where we have a ligand receptor pair for a particular cell type including themselves, and binded by different ligand receptor pathway. So you have the information about the pathway, the ligand receptor pair, and the cell type. What does this information gain us? If we aggregate the pathway, we can really quickly see a relational between different cell type. Is the monocyte talking to the monocyte or the neutrophil? And how is the epithelial cells talking to the immune system? We starting can see the interaction between the different cell type. But the data has multiple patients. So looking at this is certainly an informatics and a data analytical challenge because what we have is a cell type pair by ligand receptor pathway by patient a very sparse cube. And in this cube, we measure the level of interaction between ligand in cell type A and receptor in cell type B for a particular patient. So if we again aggregate the pathway and aggregate over a certain subject for some sort of healthy group, you can draw this out in a network diagram, seeing connection between the epithelial cells. So we use the cold color, the greens, to represent the epithelial cell types and the sort of warmer, hotter color to represent the immune cell type. So in the healthy patient, we see a striking thing and you would expect, right? There's a lot more communication between the epithelial and the immune cells among the moderate and the severe patient. But this is expected result, not necessarily that of interest. What we want to then see is what about moderate and severe? So in moderate and severe, the monocyte of necrophage, uh, we look at the connection with the neutrophil. We can see that there is a lot more high interaction in the severe patient. Red is in the severe and blue is in the moderate. If we zoom in and look at what are the pathways that is really involved, so we look at the monocyte as a ligand and the neutrophil as a receptor, what are the pathways that's involved? You can clearly see that the inflammation pathway are overactive in the severe group, as expected. But this is a proof of concept that this workflow makes sense. 
This also allowed us to next to examine what is interesting, which is the epithelial and the immune group. You can see that connection from the goblet cell to some of the immune actually shows blue. It means it's actually higher. So it's not necessarily higher in uh, interaction. It's moderate group have a slightly higher interaction between the goblet and the immune cell. And the severe group have a lot of heterogeneity, but a lower interaction, which is a little bit to the surprise. So finally, to conclude, um, we are trying to see whether this information can potentially discriminate severity. We don't want to look at information that's too far on. We want to see whether epithelial and immune relationship provides discrimination power. So here's a plot looking at PCA, and you can see that the control and the moderate and the critical is somewhat separated. Looking at the leave one out cross validation accuracy using a machine learning method, LDA classifier, cell type proportion clearly doesn't do well. And if we look at all the connection, it's not too bad. What to our surprise, um, and saying to the potential is that the epi to immune has a very high discrimination power between severe and moderate people. And we are able to see that if we are simply looking at the PBMC data, then we, reply, we apply our workflow to many different data set. And if there's anyone in the audience who have COVID data, I would like to try our method. We really welcome collaboration. Um, that the interaction accuracy is just not as high as epithelial and immune. So to summarize, we have a workflow to identify cell-cell communication in individual subject. We see that this interaction is a lot higher in COVID patient compared to healthy individual. As expected, higher monocyte and neutrophil interaction in severe people because of inflammation. And we see very heterogeneous um, results in moderate patient in the gallop to the immune cell. And there's actually exists a subgroup that shows cluster that has lower cell-cell interaction. Finally, we have a very small data set, 19 patients, but the results points to the potential of discrimination between moderate and severe patients. And I like to acknowledge this is a joint work with a team of people, in particular, my student, Ying Xing Lin, who has done the bulk of the analysis, and also the molecular biologist, Greg, Lippin, Caesar, and Daniel, for their constant discussion in this very exciting topic. Thank you. Thanks, Jen, for the great talk. I, I, I need to apologize that I started uh, uh, earlier, five minutes uh, uh, ahead of the schedule. Uh, sorry about that. So, uh, but we have more time for questions and answers. So for the audience, if you have any questions, I think you can just uh, type in your question uh, in the chat room of the Zoom meeting and also or maybe use the Slack uh, channel. So Jay, I have uh, some questions first. So can you go back to slide uh, uh, 22, page 22? Okay, so go back to slide 22. Is this one? So 22. Uh, yeah, this yeah, is the this one. one. So the, my yeah. question is that, no, the, the network, yeah, yeah this one. Uh, my question is that uh, uh, as you show, uh, you have shown that a lot of var variation among the patients uh, of di different group in the cell proportions. But uh, in this uh, network, uh, have you seen this, is this our representative version of the network in each group or is a kind of a summary of what is the variation? Yeah, so, um, you know, because the data is a three-dimensional sparse cube, right? So we right. really do have to aggregate in some dimension to look at this information. So what we are seeing here is an aggregate information. And so what is what I'm saying is an aggregate information over the pathways, as well as aggregate information over group of subject. Okay. Um, and so if we want to go further, which is what I'm showing in this heat map, this unpack the information. So you can see every cell representing interaction 
And instead of looking at the aggregate information across all pathway, we can actually go in and examine which are the pathway that are really different between the severe group of patient and the moderate group of patient. So yes, we can can actually unpack it, but we've got to use different visualization to unpack this information. Okay, thanks. And, and another question is, uh, uh, have you seen uh, any correlation of this uh, interaction with the uh, proportion? Uh, so these are the gene expression metrics, the heat map, right? Uh, I mean, the no, no, have... this is the interaction matrix. So it's right. not expression, it's actually interaction. So, so it's actually co-expression, right? So it, it's a, oh, right, it's right. based on the yeah, co-expression of, 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 of genes and pathways, anyway. Correct. Right. Uh, my my uh, my question is about: Is there any association with the proportion of cell types? You you have shown in the earlier slides some of early slides that the different cell types the proportion varies a lot, right? That's right. The proportion varies a lot. And one of the questions we try to look at is, was the proportion able to discriminate between the severe and the moderate group better? Or does this co-expression level able to separate the severe and moderate group? And, and so this is what we were looking um, at the end of our study uh, um, here. Right. So if we look at our study here is we, we look at a machine learning method with a cell type proportion, but we're also looking at a method where we're looking at just the cell cell interaction as the feature. So we're looking at different type of feature based on the same classifier and see which feature was better with higher accuracy. OK, we got a question from the audience. The question is, uh, can you group the type of interaction uh, such as X, uh, a extracellular matrix type or kinase etc. Um, so this I, I'm not sure. I think that information, if it's worse in the pathways, then we were able to do it. So that we will, if we want to group it, we will need additional information from databases. So, um, Maybe I repeat myself again, it's plausible if the database of this information exists, then we can actually incorporate that information when we group um, the ligand and receptor. Okay, thanks, great. Uh, now we are, uh, it's time to move on to the next slide. Uh, Jane, can you stop sharing your screen? Yes, I will. Um, Thank you. And have a good evening. Sorry, I, my apologies. I'm trying to get myself out of the marker so that I can stop share. Thank you very much. Good.